I find it fascinating to see how that uh, element of um, marketing has now become uh, the dominant force in uh, the definition of art history and the definition of, of uh, what's relevant. Whereas we are actually um, approaching it from a whole other point of view, which is that we still come from the art historic side and we still believe in the longevity. And um, having studied both banking and art history, I, I see a lot of the things that uh, have run parallel for a number of years. I see that there will be a separation uh, in the near future again of what is more long-term valuable um, art historically and therefore financially. Um, and, a, and a passing of uh, Andy Warhol's five minutes of fame with a lot of the contemporary. I don't think it just evolved. I think it changed everything fundamentally. It changed it within the last 15 years, literally. Um, as much as the internet has changed so much of our behavior and thinking, that kind of attitude has changed the art market uh, for, uh, for good, I think. You have indeed a shrinking but existing and hopefully yet soon growing again element of connoisseurship buying. Um, but that is, that is almost uh, eclectic by now. And then you have a majority of buying, which is actually um, a relatively narrowly defined group of artists that fit that category and galleries that have become such a huge um, machinery actually it's a very hungry machine and it needs a lot of food and that is in itself not without dangers and then you have the third category which is younger smaller galleries that are actually still operating on the basis of discovering and and doing the hard work at the beginning uh, which increasingly lose at an earlier and earlier stage those artists that they have been bringing up now, you don't want the eternally thankful artist. Uh, that's not really what uh, this world is all about. But I think there were relationships, um, like a Richard Prince who was with his gallery for a long, long time. I see much less. And that's not necessarily only a bad thing. I think the fact that people are broader, more open, and don't just follow one guru, that is, I think, a good thing. The new guru, however, is, is what uh, people perceive as success. And that is, to a large degree, coined by a handful of galleries and the auction houses, especially Christie's and Sotheby's, which have become um, institutions that dominate a field uh, where they traditionally were not um, present. And having talked about this new attitude towards modern, contemporary, contemporary, modern, uh, when you think of the upcoming Christie's sale where it's uh, back to the future uh, approach with um, a, a comment uh, that uh, the curator of that uh, sale uh, has recently visited the Picasso Museum and was flabbergasted about how great Picasso is, uh, which is a quote uh, from the New York Times. Um, I thought that is great, that's a good thing. However, shouldn't be a surprise. That kind of arrogant naivete sometimes, I find, I find amazing. And um, that is something that uh, has inherent dangers for the, for the art world. If uh, you follow the rule that uh, the financial success defines success only, and you leave out the traditional route of the museums, the critic, uh, the, the long-term career, um, you have a five-year label on artists where within five years they have their rise and fall. Uh, it becomes closer and closer to fashion. And it's interesting in that context, I think, that both auction houses, Sotheby's and Christie's, are now going to be run by people who come from the fashion world. That is not a coincidence. Uh, the parallels between the fashion world and the art world have become uh, increasingly stronger. I think what is very much part of the auction world and the marketing strategies of the auction world is very parallel to the fashion world shouldn't be the case at an art fair because that was an invention by the galleries to actually um, create a momentum, to create a certain urgency, to make decisions uh, equally as you might have at an evening sale. But it was with real exhibitions by real galleries who have real artists and who think long term. And that is my, my concern at the moment that uh, we have 
in our quest to become competitive with the auction houses, too often adapted the same methods now for the uh, galleries and for the uh, exhibitions at art fairs. And uh, I think in order for us to actually make a difference and for us to be relevant as galleries, we have to think carefully about that and change that. So if the market is bigger, if supply and demand is bigger, does that mean you have more great art being created? And I, I would debate no. I would say uh, there's a certain amount of geniuses born per century uh, that hasn't increased just because there's more demand for it. If you go today to an art fair and how selections are partly made is that it becomes very predictable. You know that this gallery has to have those artists from that period and this gallery will have that artist from that period. So basically you either already pre-sell because you already send out emails to everybody. So you even come to the art fair knowing what to expect. I think that element of surprise without the emailing before, without uh, the fact that uh, you were uh, as clearly defined as a structure, uh, that had an element of discovery, surprise and magic, which we have lost a little bit. And I think that is very important to get back, that element of magic that you would come to an art fair and you discover, not just in the young, young, young section, but also within established galleries, also within the classic contemporary galleries. That element of, of, of magic, that element of personality, of character, of eccentricity, um, that needs to be rediscovered as well. Mm hmm.